Please accept our humble obeisances, Guru Maharaj. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, today we have Yogi Sir with us, Guru Maharaj. So he will be doing the translation in Thai. Okay. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Dandabad Pranams. Recording in progress. Omagyana Timaram Dasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksuran Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vanchakaupata Rubyasya Kripa Sindhu Bhaevacha Patitanam Pavanibhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha, Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. We're reading the Nectar of Devotion and we're on chapter number seven entitled Evidence Regarding Devotional Principles. We're, we're on the second subheading, the second item, accepting initiation from the spiritual master and receiving instructions from him. So it's described here how Sage Prabuddha was speaking to the king. So this sage Prabhuda, he's one of the nine Yogendras. And they were traveling and preaching everywhere and they gave instructions to this king. This king is Maharaj Nimi, Nimiraj. So he told the king, he said, a disciple has to accept the spiritual master, not only as spiritual master, but also as the representative of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and the Super Soul. <laughs> So we should understand this statement properly. We have to accept the spiritual teacher as the representative, not as God, but as the representative of God. In other words, he knows God and he can communicate the message from the disciples. He can communicate to the Supreme Lord. Srila Prabhupada writes, in other words, the disciple should accept the spiritual master as God because he is the external manifestation of Krishna. Krishna. 
This is confirmed in every scripture. A disciple should accept the spiritual master in this way. One should learn Srimad Bhagavatam seriously and with all respect and veneration. Hearing and speaking Srimad Bhagavatam is a religious process that elevates one. Right, we want to elevate ourselves to the platform of serving and loving the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The attitude of the disciple should be to satisfy the bona fide spiritual master. Then it will be very easy for him to understand spiritual knowledge. This is confirmed in the Vedas. And Rupa Goswami will explain that for a person who has unflinching faith in God and the spiritual master, everything becomes revealed very easily. So this is an important point. We have to have equal faith in both Krishna and in the Guru. Sometimes we ask people, do you have more faith in Krishna or do you have more faith in Guru? And some people will say, oh, I have more faith in my Guru. And some people will say, I have more faith in Krishna. And both of these people are wrong. They should have equal faith in Guru and in Krishna. The Guru is the representative of Krishna, so he is not different from Krishna. And so it's the duty of the, the disciple to satisfy their teacher. We say by the mercy of the spiritual master that we get the mercy of Krishna. And without the mercy of the spiritual master, then it's very difficult to get success in spiritual life. So, pleasing the spiritual master is a good, a very good way to make advancement in Krishna consciousness. And pleasing the spiritual master means 
to please his spiritual master. We have to understand the principle, the spiritual master is not independent. He is dependent on his spiritual master. All right, so next item, serving the spiritual master with faith and confidence. So Prabhupada writes, he said, regarding accepting initiation from the spiritual master, so it's described in the 11th canto, 17th chapter, verse 27, and it was stated by Lord Krishna himself. So Lord Krishna himself told Uddhava, he said, the, the spiritual master must be accepted not only as my representative but as my very self. He must never be considered on the same level as an ordinary human being. One should never be envious of the spiritual master, just like we may be envious of an ordinary person. The spiritual master should always be seen as a representative of Krishna. And by serving the spiritual master, one is able to serve all the demigods. And so we have to understand this very carefully, the very important instructions. We often give a lot of honor and respect to the spiritual master. Now, we have to understand the spiritual master is not going to be the same for everyone. Everyone has their own choice about who to accept this as their spiritual master. We don't force people that you have to take initiation from this person. It's all the free will of the devotee. Every devotee has free will and they choose when and from whom they're going to take initiation. But we know initiation is required, it's important. So sometimes we will see the spiritual master honored 
that he is given a, a seat on an elevated position above everyone. This is this is common in Buddhism. In the Buddhist culture, we see the Buddhist monks always sit on a level above the ordinary people. And we give, sometimes we will also honor the spiritual master by giving a flower garland. And sometimes we will honor the spiritual master by giving them financial donate contributions. However, we should understand the spiritual master never demands these things. People may offer and the spiritual master may accept, but he does not insist, he doesn't demand, you have to give me. And people should not think that uh, they will take, con take money from people just to maintain their material life. Now, some devotees may be married and they have family to support. But that is their concern. That is not the concern of the disciples to maintain their family. Rather, whatever money is given to the spiritual teacher, it's for the it's for the service of Lord Krishna, and for the service of the society. So sometimes people, they feel envious of the spiritual teacher that all people gave him money. But the spiritual teacher accepts that money for the service of Krishna. He doesn't use it for his own self, for his own material benefit. The spiritual teacher doesn't have material desires. He's dedicated to the service of Krishna. And everything he has is for the service of Krishna. So we should not envy the spiritual teacher. Dangna 
Of course, in the material world, every, everyone is envious of each other. Somebody has more money than another, we will envy them. If somebody has more power or more fame than another person, we will envy them. Actually, we're all envious of Krishna. Krishna has everything. He has all the money, he has all the power, all the fame. But Arjuna was not envious of Krishna. Arjuna was a friend and a devotee of Krishna. So we also have to become devoted and a friend of Krishna. And then we can actually understand the position of Krishna. And by serving Krishna nicely, we will get the blessings of all the demigods. Actually, Prabhupada said, by serving Krishna, we serve all the demigods. Okay, go ahead. So the next item, following in the footsteps of saintly persons. In the Skanda Purana, it said, that a devotee follows the path, the past acharyas and saintly persons. So by, by following the past acharyas, we can achieve the, 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 the desired results with no chance of lamenting or being baffled in progress. So then there's another quote from another scripture called the Brahma Yamala. Let me complete Brahma Yamala cloud on me. So it said there, if somebody wants to put, if somebody wants to be himself a great devotee without following the authorities of the scriptures, then his activities will never help. His activities will never help to make him progress in spiritual life. Instead, he will simply create a disturbance for the sincere devotees. People who don't strictly follow the principles of the scriptures are generally called sahajas. 
พวกที่ไม่ปฏิบัติตามหลักธรรมของพระคัมภีร์ที่เปิดเผยอย่างเคร่งครัดเรียกว่าสหาเจียสหาเจีย means one who takes everything to be cheap สหาเจียหมายถึงผู้ที่หลอกลวงทุกอย่าง and they have their own ideas their own own wrong ideas about things And they don't follow the scriptures. เป็นผู้ที่จินตนาการว่าทุกอย่างไร้ค่าไปหมดและมีความคิดที่ขึ้นมาเองกูขึ้นมาเองและไม่ปฏิบัติตามคําสั่งสอนของพระคัมภีร์ So such people are simply creating disturbance to devotional service. บุคคลเหล่านี้ได้แต่สร้างความเดือดร้อนในการปฏิบัติปุถิตนเสียสละรับใช้เท่านั้น So Prabhupada explains that people who are not in devotional service, they may object to this. s r i p a d a says that those who do not follow the rules of the Vedic tradition in the practice of devotional service, they may not be able to accept this. They don't care for the scriptures. They don't care to follow the scriptures. Because they are not interested in practicing the rules of the Vedic tradition. So an example of this is seen in the Buddhist philosophy. ตัวอย่างอย่างเช่นในปรัชญาของศาสนาพุทธ So Lord Buddha was born in a family of Kshatriya kings. พระพุทธเจ้าทรงกำเนิดในคัชตริยหรือว่าลูกทรงเกิดในกษัตริย์นะครับวันนักษัตริย์ But his philosophy was not according to the Vedic teachings, and therefore it was rejected. ปัจเจกของพระองค์เนี่ยทรงไม่ได้ไปตามคำพิพเวศดังนั้นทรงทรงถูกอย่างยกเลิกนะครับหลีกเลี่ยง But then there was a Hindu king called Maharaj Ashok, and he helped Buddha to spread his religion. ฉะนั้นเนี่ยภายใต้การของกษัตริย์ฮินดูมหาราชอโศกเนี่ยทรงเผยแพร่ไปทั่วอินเดียและประเทศข้างเคียงด้วย Yeah he spread the Buddhist religion all over India and then he spread it to other countries as well like Nepal and Burma and Sri Lanka Malaysia even Japan China พระองค์เนี่ยไม่ใช่แค่ทรงเผยแพร่ในประเทศอินเดียแล้วทรงเผยแพร่ไปข้างนอกประเทศด้วยนะครับอย่างเช่นในปาลชิลังกาอินเดียไทยด้วยนะครับก็เหล่าเอเชียทั้งหลาย But then there was a great personality, a powerful personality named Shankar Acharya who appeared, and he preached against the Buddhism, and he drove the Buddhism out of India. และพระอาจารย์นะครับสังกัจารียนนะครับผู้ยิ่งใหญ่นะครับทรงปรากฏและทรงขับไล่นะครับขับไล่ศาสนาพุทธออกไปจากอินเดีย So Shankaracharya did this very important service to to get the Buddhism out of India. สังกัจารียนี่ทรงทำเป็นเป็นหน้าที่ที่สำคัญมากนะครับที่เอาศาสนาพุทธเนี่ยออกไปจากอินเดีย The Buddhists or other religions who do don't care for the scriptures sometimes say that there are many devotees of Lord Buddha who show devotional service to Lord Buddha. ชาวพุทธและนักศาสนาอื่นๆที่ไม่สนใจใยดีกับพระคัมภีร์ที่เปิดเผยกล่าวว่ามีสาวกของพระพุทธเจ้ามากมายที่แสดงการอุทิศตนเสียสละรับใช้ต่อพระพุทธองค์ So the Buddhists they don't follow any of the scriptures which we follow. ดังนั้นเนี่ยสาวกพระพุทธเนี่ยทรงไม่ได้ปฏิบัติตามคัมภีร์พระเวทที่เราปฏิบัติเหมือนอยู่ They wrote their own books. They have their own 
philosophy. So they don't follow any of the Vedas, they don't follow the Vedic teachings. But they say there are devotees of Lord Buddha who have a lot of devotion for Lord Buddha. So they say these people are also pure devotees because they have devotion for Lord Buddha. So they say they should be considered devotees. But it's explained that Rupa Goswami said that the followers of the Buddhism cannot be devotees. Although Lord Buddha is an incarnation of Krishna, the followers of the incarnations of, of the follower of Lord Buddha are not they're not very advanced in knowledge of the Vedas. Yeah, Lord Buddha came to lead the people away from the Vedas. Because the people were killing so many animals in the name of the Vedas. So Lord Buddha came and he stopped all the killing of the animals and he led the people away from the Vedas. He said, don't follow the Vedas, don't listen to the Brahmanas. He told them to follow him. He said, just follow me. So they followed the Buddha. But if, if they did study the Vedas, then they would come to understand the conclusion of the Vedas is that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So any scripture which says that, that there's no God, then we don't accept that. That is actually atheism. So atheism is against the teaching of the Vedas. And all the great Acharyas, they all teach that there is a Supreme Personality of Godhead. And they preach, they preach the, about the Vedas for this, this for the benefit of the people. So Lord Buddha is an incarnation of Krishna, it's described in the Srimad Bhagavatam. But in the Srimad Bhagavatam it says that Lord Buddha 
appeared to cheat the atheists. So the teachings of the Buddha, they're meant for the atheists. They're not meant for people who believe in God. So people may wonder, why would Krishna teach atheism? Why would he teach about atheism? Why did he come as a Buddha to teach atheism? So there was a reason. That the reason was that the people were killing animals in the name of the Vedas. The people, these people, they were in the name of the Vedas, they were doing Vedic sacrifices and they were killing animals and eating all the meat. So Lord Buddha came to stop all these sacrifices, to stop all the killing of the animals. He wanted, Lord Buddha wanted to stop the people from changing the meaning of the Vedas. So Lord Buddha preached atheism so that they could follow him. But Lord Buddha is the incarnation of Krishna. And so when they follow Lord Buddha, then they're doing devotional service. But the problem is now is that people don't just follow the Buddha, they all want to become the Buddha. Actually, they're meant to follow the Buddha and be the servant of the Buddha. And if they follow, if they follow, if they follow the Buddha, they should remain the follower of the Buddha. They should not become the Buddha. So every all the Buddhists, they all try to become the Buddha. The men become the Buddha and the women also become the Buddha. And they say, who is the Buddha? The Buddha is not God. And he's not man, he's Buddha. So Buddhism is the mode of goodness. It's not transcendental. It's but it helps people to sometimes develop better qualities. The main principle of Buddhism is non-violence. So non-violence is a good thing, but non-violence is not the highest principle of religion. ให้ความเมตตานะครับแต่ว่าให้ความเมตตาเนี่ยไม่ใช่ปัจจัย 
หรือความรู้ที่สูงสุด So we have to understand there's much higher principles of religion than nonviolence. เราต้องเข้าใจว่าเราจะมีความรู้นะครับที่สูงกว่าการให้ความเมตตา And these highest principles of religion are taught by Lord Krishna. และความรู้นะครับความรู้ที่สูงสุดก็ได้ตัดโดย Krishna. And they're shown and demonstrated by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. และทรงได้แสดงนะครับลีลาเรื่องนี้ก็คือในเจตนญมหาประบุ Okay, we'll go ahead to the next one. Inquiring about eternal religious principles. หัวข้อต่อไปถามเกี่ยวกับหลักธรรมศาสนานิรันดร So in the Naradiya Purana, it says. If one is actually very serious about devotional service, then all of his purposes will be served without any delay. ในนาราเดียปุราณกล่าวว่าหากบุคคลจริงจังมากเกี่ยวกับการอุทิศตนเสียสละรับใช้เช่นนี้จุดมุ่งหมายทั้งหมดของเขาจะได้รับการสนองตอบโดยไม่ล่าช้า So we have to be serious. That's the idea. We should be genuine. That we really want to know how to improve our devotional service. Ah, we have to have some genuineness, some faith in the service that we are doing. Ah, we have to have some genuineness, some faith in the service that we are doing. Ah, we have to have some genuineness, some faith in the service that we are doing. Ah, we have to have some genuineness, some faith in the service Up everything, uh, material for Krishna's satisfaction. หัวข้อต่อไปเตรียมพร้อมยกเลิกทุกสิ่งที่เป็นวัตถุเพื่อให้ Krishna ทรงพอพระทัย So there's a quote from the Padma Purana. ในปัตมาปุราณกล่าว It says, for one who has given up. His material sense enjoyment, and has accepted the principle of devotional service, the opulence of Vishnu Loka, the kingdom of God, is awaiting. สำหรับผู้ที่ยกเลิกความเลื่อนเลิมทางภาษาสัมผัสและมายอมรับหลักธรรมแห่งการอุทิศตนเสียสละรับใช้ความมั่งคั่งแห่งพระวิษณุแห่งวิษณุโลกะหรือพระนาจักแห่งองค์พระขวานกำลังรออยู่ So two things are required. One is you have to give up material sense enjoyment. มีสองสิ่งที่ได้กล่าวไว้ก็คือเราต้องยกเลิกการเลื่อนเลิงทางภาษาสัมผัส So material sense enjoyment means you do a lot of, you may play with your handphone and You may play with your computer and watch television. This is all. This could be all sense enjoyment. การที่เราเล่นโทรศัพท์มือถือการดูโทรทัศน์นะครับสิ่งเหล่านี้เป็นการเพิดเพินทางภาษาสัมผัสวัตถุ Who is that? Who is doing this? You have to mute them. Um, who is that? Okay, already in Okay. So we have to give up sense enjoyment, and at the same time, we have to accept the principles of devotional service. เราก็ต้องยอมยกเลิกการเลื่อนเลิงทำภาษาสัมผัสและเราก็ต้องยอมรับหลักธรรมแห่งการอุทิศตนเสียสละรับใช้ Principles of devotional service mean chanting and hearing about the Supreme Lord Krishna. หลักธรรมแห่งการปฏิตนเสียสละรับใช้ Krishna ก็คือการฟังฟังแล้วก็สวดมหามน Worshiping the Lord and associating with devotees. This is all the principles of devotional service. การรับใช้พระปฏิมาพระองค์และการ
ผู้ที่ตนเสียสละต่อพระองค์เนี่ยนี่คือสิ่งเหล่านี้เป็นการการใช้ความรักต่อพระองค์ so when we do that then we become qualified to go to the kingdom of God to go to Vaikuntha หากเราทำสิ่งเหล่านี้ได้เนี่ยเราก็สามารถที่จะไปพระตำหนักของพระองค์ได้ไวกุลกับ All right, next one, residing in a sacred place. ว่าข้อหลักต่อไปทำนักณสถานที่ศักดิ์สิทธิ์ So in the Skanda Purana, it says that for a person who has lived in Dwarka for six months, or for one month, or even for one fortnight, then there is. A That he gets the chance to go to Vaikuntha Loka. n e s k a n d a Purana d e k a w a i c h e n k a n w a s a m r a b u k o n p u a s a y u t i t a w a r a k a p e n v e l a h o k d e a n n u n g d e a n l u m e t e n n u n g k u n k a n p a t a n a p a i t u n g a m i o k a t k a n p a t a n a p a i t u n g Vaikuntha. And when he he can also he will get all the profit of. Sarupya Mukti, which means he'll get the same form as Lord Krishna, four-handed form, like Narayan. และประโยชน์ทั้งหมดจาก Sarupya Mukti, ลัทธิที่มีรูปลักษ์สี่กรณ์เหมือนพระนารายณ์นะครับกำลังรออยู่ตัวเด There are different holy places. Here it mentions about Dwarka, but there's other holy places. Of course, there's also Puri and Vrindavan and Kurukshetra, and many holy places. Ah, in this, there's a cloud about the Dwarka, the mountain of Dwarka, and we'll have many places that are holy. Like the Jagannath Puri, Vrindavan, and แล้วก็ที่อื่นๆ Oh, Dwarka is the place where Krishna went after his marriage, and he stayed there with all of his wives. Ah, Dwarka เนี่ยเป็นสถานที่พำนักของ Krishna หลังจากที่ Krishna เนี่ยได้แต่งนาแต่งงานที่ And Krishna, Krishna had many children by each of his wives. และ Krishna เนี่ยทรงมีลูกหลานมากมายในภรรยาแต่ละบุคคล So Dwarka is one of the holy places. It said Krishna resides there in Dwarka. It's a dam. Dwarka, เนี่ยสามารถที่จะพำนักอยู่ที่นั่นได้เพราะว่าที่นั่นเนี่ยเป็นสถานที่ศักดิ์สิทธิ์หรือว่าเป็นดาม And if we go there and live there, even for it says even for two weeks, then you can become qualified to get liberation. เราแค่ไปพำนักอยู่ที่นั่นเพียงแค่สองสัปดาห์ก็เรามีคุณสมบัตินะครับที่จะหลุดพ้นได้ and you get the chance to even get a body a form like Lord Narayan four four handed form พอเราหลุดพ้นแล้วเนี่ยเรามีโอกาสที่จะได้รับรูปลักษ์พระนารายสี่กรนะครับเหมือนพระนารายณ์ so This is the the reward you get for going to stay in Dwarka for two weeks, or a month, or six months. อันนี้เป็นประโยชน์นะครับสำหรับผู้ที่พำนักอยู่ที่ทวารกะหกเดือนหนึ่งเดือนแม้กระทั่งหนึ่งคืน So to live in Dwarka, it's. Uh, Right on the edge, it's right at the sea. It, it's uh, quite far away, cut off. It's away over on the edge of the ocean. การที่พำนักอยู่ที่ชาวรากาเนี่ยก็จะอยู่ใกล้กับริมฝั่งนะครับทะเลนะครับ But it's a very holy place, very special place. จะเป็นสถานที่ศักดิ์สิทธิ์ Lord Krishna had his pastimes there in Dwarka. And then there's another quotation from the Brahma Purana, 
And this is describing about a different holy place. This is describing about Purushottam Shetra, which means Jagannath Puri. So it said that the whole area of Purushottam Shetra is 80 square miles. So it 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 cannot even be properly described. Even the demigods from the higher planets see that all the people in Jagannath Puri as having the same bodily features. Just like Met, people in Vaikuntha. So it means all the demigods, they see all the people of Jagannath Puri as having four hands, four arms. So it's, it's also a holy place, Purushottam Shetra. Or you can call it Jagannath Puri. So Dwarka is on the west coast and, and Jagannath Puri is on the east coast. So they're both very nice holy places. Jagannath Puri, of course, also by the sea. All right. And one more place is described. This is describing about Naimasharanya. So one time there was a meeting of great sages at Naimasharanya. And Sutta Goswami was there and he was speaking the Srimad Bhagavatam to all the sages. Initially, it was the father of Sutta Goswami who was speaking, Romahashan Sutta. But Lord Balaram came there and Romahashan Sutta was not, he did not show proper etiquette to Lord Balaram. So Lord Balaram killed him. So after Balaram killed Romaharshan Sutta, then they arranged that Romaharshan's son, Sutta Goswami, would speak. And Sutta Goswami, he had heard the Srimad Bhagavatam, he had been there when Sukadeva Goswami was speaking the Bhagavatam to Maharaj Pariksit. Sutta Goswami was speaking, he, he heard from Sukadeva Goswami. Sutta Goswami niya song dai, dai liyan du ma chap, Rupa Goswami. No, not Rupa Goswami. Sukadeva Goswami. Sukadeva Goswami, right? Sukadeva Goswami was speaking to 
Maharaj Parikshit. Sukadeva Swami song hai kwam ruta Maharaj Parikshit. Sutta Goswami was there and he heard. Sukadeva Swami nya song thamnak yutinan. Then afterwards Sutta Goswami came to Naimisharanya. So Sutta Goswami spoke Srimad Bhagavatam to all the sages in Naimisharanya. So at that time he told the sages the importance of the Ganges. He told them, they said, the water of the Ganges is always carrying the flavor of tosis offered at the lotus feet of Krishna. So the water of the Ganges is always flowing. And it spreads the glories of Lord Krishna. And wherever the water of the Ganga flows, all will be sanctified. And will be purified internally and externally. It said, wherever the Ganges flows, that's a holy place. So the Ganges flows very, it has a strong current flows to the sea with us. It's a, quite a strong current. And you try to swim across the Ganga, it's quite difficult because the current is so strong. I said, even the big elephant gets in the Ganga, the, the current is so strong it will carry the elephant away. And there's a nice verse in the Srimad Bhagavatam spoken by Queen Kunti about the Ganges. Tvai me Ganga Vishaya Madir Madhu Patek Sakrit Ratim Urvahatamada Gange Pogam Mudanvadi. Queen Kunti is saying, as the Ganges forever flows to the sea, let my attraction be born to you in the same spontaneous way, without hindrance. So this is the description of how the Ganga flows. So the Ganga, because it's the water which comes from the lotus feet of Lord Vishnu, it purifies everything.
Prabhupada's sister. When Prabhupada's sister was alive, she would always carry a bottle of Ganges water with her. And she would always purify everything with Ganges water. She put drops of water everywhere. Some devotees are very, very attached to the Ganges, the great devotees of Mother Ganges. Sridhar, Kolaveka Sridhar was a great devotee of Mother Ganga. Whatever money he got, he would spend half of his money on the worship of Mother Ganga. And Pundarik Vijanidi, he was also a great devotee of Mother Ganga. He would always come and offer obeisances to Ganga. And he was very unhappy to see people clean their teeth in the Ganga and take their bath with soap in the Ganga. So, worship of Mother Ganga, it said in the Chaitanya Charitamrita that the Lord comes in the Kali Yuga in the form of wood and in the form of water. So in the form of wood, the Lord comes as Lord Jagannath, and in the form of water, he comes as Mother Ganga. Okay, so we will stop here. And we'll ask if there's any questions. Two participants raised hand. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. Um, regarding the point uh, about uh, um, the followers of Buddhism are not really devotees, uh, because if, uh, Rupa Goswami says that they cannot be considered as devotees, because they are not following the highest principle of religion. Is it like that? And what is the highest principle of religion? Uh, yeah. Well, first of all, Rupa Goswami didn't say they're not following the highest principle of religion. He said they don't accept the Vedas. <laughs> Sasana 
พวกเขาเนี่ยทรงไม่ยอมรับคำปิภเวทต่างหาก Yes Lord Buddha led the people away from the Vedas พระพุทธเจ้าเนี่ยทรงนะครับให้หลีกเลี่ยงนะครับคำปิภเวทจากผู้คน Because they were not following the Vedas properly เพราะว่าผู้คนเนี่ยทรงไม่ได้ยอมไม่ได้ปฏิบัติคำปิภเวทอย่างถูกต้อง They were all meat eaters ทุกทุกคนเนี่ยใช้ผลประโยชน์ในการทานเนื้อสัตว์ And the brahmanas were also corrupted The brahmanas were corrupt and degraded และพราหมณ์นะครับก็ทรงบิดเบียนนะครับ And the brahmanas were cheating to the people and they were telling the people to do animal sacrifice พราหมณ์เนี่ยก็ทรงหลอกลวงประชาชนหลอกลวงผู้คนนะว่าเราสามารถที่จะสังหารสัตว์แล้วก็มาเป็นการพิธีกรรมบูชาฟัน And in this way they would tell the people pay them money the brahmanas would get money from the people and they would kill animals พราหมณ์เนี่ยก็จะทรงทำธุรกิจนะครับเกี่ยวกับการให้ผู้คนเนี่ยให้เงินมาแล้วจากนั้นเนี่ยพราหมณ์ก็จะทรงสังหารสัตว์ So Lord Buddha stopped all that พระศาสนาพระพุทธเจ้าเนี่ยทรงหยุดการกระทำเช่นนี้ He led the people. He said, "Don't follow the Brahmanas. Don't listen to the Brahmanas, and don't study the Vedas." พระองค์ทรงกล่าวว่าทรงอย่าไปฟังพราหมณ์ทรงอย่าไปเชื่อมั่นในฟังพราหมณ์นะครับทรงอย่าไปอ่านหนังสือของพราหมณ์ So Buddhism was a reaction against the, the Vedic system of Vanashram Dharma. Buddhism, the s a s a n a p u t n i a ก็ทรงเป็นนะครับผลกระทบต่อ Vanashram Dharma นะครับ Vanashram ของเรา Lord Buddha said, "Don't need to follow the Brahmanas." He said, "Everybody is the same. We're all one." พระพุทธเจ้าเนี่ยทรงกล่าวนะครับว่าไม่จําเป็นต้องไปพึ่งครับคำพิภเวทนะเพราะว่าพวกเราเนี่ยเป็นหนึ่ง So they said you don't need brahmanas so the people became Buddhist they just followed they, they, they didn't need brahmanas anymore so the brahmanas were out of work ฉะนั้นเนี่ยก็ทรงไม่ต้องการพราหมณ์นะครับในการทำงานเช่นนี้ because they had been corrupt because they were they were bad they were not good brahmanas they were cheating เพราะพราหมณ์เหล่านี้เนี่ยทรงบิดเบือนทรงหลอกลวง and they were killing the animals and they were getting the people to do more killing of animals ทรงสังหารสัตว์นะครับแล้วก็พยายามที่จะให้ผู้คนเนี่ยก็หลงเชื่อในทางนี้เช่นกัน and they were doing this just so they could get more money และพราหมณ์ทำสิ่งเหล่านี้เพราะเพื่อทำให้ตัวเองเนี่ยได้รับเงินมา So if people do if people do these things just for the to get money it's very bad หากเราทำสิ่งเหล่านี้เพื่อได้รับเงินมาเนี่ยเป็นสิ่งที่ผิด So Lord Lord Buddha he stopped the people killing all the animals and he led them away from the Vedas พระพุทธเจ้าเนี่ยทรงหยุดการกระทำเช่นนี้นะครับและทรงยกเลิกหลักคำปิภเวทออกไป And he taught them about nonviolence. He taught them ahimsa. และทรงให้ความรู้นะครับเกี่ยวกับการไม่สังหารก็คือความเมตตา So that is not the highest principle of religion. แต่ว่าสิ่งนั้นนะไม่ใช่เป้าหมายสูงสุดของศาสนา The the highest principle of religion is to develop love of God. เป้าหมายสูงสุดของเราหลักศาสนาก็คือพัฒนาความรักต่อเจ้า Lord Chaitanya taught that the goal of life is prem punato mahan to develop love of God. พระองค์เจตนาอาบรุเนทรงกล่าวเช่นกันนะครับเราต้องพัฒนาความรักต่อพระเจ้า So that is the real principle, the highest principle of religion. 
และนี่คือหลักความรู้ที่สูงสุดของศาสนา Yes v a i s n a v i understand Yes to p e r i p e r m a r a t i um and one more doubt here in this we read that the person residing in a sacred place uh, in s a n d a p u r a n a t e m p l e like uh, Uh, even if he resides even for a fortnight or a month, so is it like he has to do devotional service while residing there? We should understand it like that, or simply he can he can just reside. Come. Um, yeah, he he read that uh, if someone resides in the holy place for uh, uh, for a month, he can go. He can get the s p a r u liberation. Uh, Swaroop Mukti. I was thinking maybe he has to do some devotional service, or is it like just uh, he can say? Mm. Yes, if he's going to reside in the holy place, he should do devotional service. Just like you know, if you go to the holy place, people will do things like go to the temple, you know, and they'll they will hear the chanting of the holy names. The holy places, the holy places is always full of these things. You know, there's, there's, there's not, there's no real opportunity for sense gratif, mundane sense gratification in a holy place. The holy places are pure, and it's not like people. It, it, it's it's a good opportunity to become absorbed. In devotional service, just by being in the holy place. Of course, if people go to the holy place and they do nonsense, then they're not really in the holy place. Prabhupada said, "You don't go to the holy place just by buying a ticket. You have to change your consciousness. You have to have the proper mood and proper mentality in the holy place." So you're right. Yeah, they have to chant the holy name. They have to read the scriptures and go to the temple and see the deities. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Guru Maharaj, regarding the spiritual master, uh, we you said few things about the spiritual master, and the spiritual master gives. The Some instruction, personal instruction, many instructions to the devotee. One of my friends, she said she forget one important instruction of the spiritual master. She has to write a book. Uh, so I was thinking, uh, uh, what uh, sometimes uh, maybe Krishna will help her if we forget the instruction of the spiritual master. And what happens to the devotee if the spiritual master departs the material world? Uh, whether how can he get uh, infection after that? Archana, are you going to translate this? อย่างเช่นนะครับมีมีสาวกนะครับเหมือนมีเพื่อนของมาจจีนะครับนะครับมีความศรัทธานะครับต่อพระอาจารย์นะครับแต่ว่าครั้งหนึ่งเนี่ยพระอาจารย์ก็ทรงให้คําสอนไปแต่อย่างเช่นเขียนหนังสือแต่ว่าเขาไม่ได้เขียนหนังสือนะครับดังนั้นเนี่ยเขาจะขาดความเชื่อมั่นความศรัทธานี้หรือเปล่า So now, uh, uh, what is your question again, v a i s h n a v i Maharaj, my question is. Uh, how the, the first uh, how the devotee communicates with the spiritual master oh, right. after the departure? Right. After the spiritual, well, you, we have to understand the spiritual master comes in many different forms. เราต้องเข้าใจว่าพระอาจารย์ทิพย์เนี่ยทรงมาในในหลายหลายรูปหลักด้วยกัน So there's two ways we get association with the spiritual master. One is by vani. And other is by vapu. Vapu means the physical body, and vani means his words or instructions. We can get the association with the spiritual master in two ways: vani and vapu. Vani is the body, and vapu is the 
ได้คบหาสมาคมต่อ,อพระองค์โดยตรงแล้วก็วับปูนะครับก็คือการนี้คำสั่งของพระองค์ So after the spiritual master leaves the body then you have to associate with him through his vani การที่เราเนี่ยได้คบหาสมาคมต่อพระอาจารย์ทิพย์แล้วเนี่ยก็เราก็จะได้คําสั่งต่อพระอาจารย์ทิพย์ก็คือวัน Just like after Srila Prabhupada left the body, we had to all study Prabhupada's books very carefully. ก็เช่นเดียวกับหลังจากที่ชีวภูมิเนี่ยทรงได้ออกจากร่างไปแล้วเนี่ยก็เราก็ได้เรียนรู้นะครับหนังสือของชีวภูมิ And we also listened to Prabhupada's lectures. และเราก็ทรงได้เรียนรู้แล้วก็ฟังนะครับเลคเชอร์ของชีวภูมิ So this way, we associate with Prabhupada through his vani. Of course, his physical body is not eternal. But the words, the words which he speaks and what he writes, that is eternal. คำพูดที่โชบุปาทรงพูดและเขียนเนี่ยทรงเป็นนิรันดร์ So you have to associate like that through his teachings. เราก็ต้องทรงคบหาสมาคมกับพระอาจารย์นะครับโดยคําสอนของพระองค์ Yeah. Yes, Thank you so much, h a r e k r i s n a Somebody else's hand is there. Yeah, Yuvati s a t i m a t a Ji, Vishnu Priya Devi d a s i m a t a Ji. I think you are able to unmute yourself. Uh, p i s h a y a c h a l e h a Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, n a n a m a t Pranam. Please accept my humble obeisances according to Sri Lama Bhagwan. a t a n a p l a y h a p i r a m i k a d a i h a Dano, y o g a r a m p a y h a n c h a l e h a เคค่ะพี่เมื่อกี้อ้างอิงจากคําตอบของครูมหาราชค่ะว่าเหมือนพราหมณ์เนี่ยเขาโกหกที่จะหลอกลวงคนอื่นโดยการที่อ้างว่าฆ่าสัตว์บูชายาเนี่ยค่ะคำถามของพี่ก็คือว่าอย่างนี้แสดงว่าในพระเวทเนี่ยไม่ได้อ้างถึงการที่นําสัตว์มาฆ่าบูชายันใช่ไหมน้องบอยเข้าใจพี่ไหมพี่อาจารย์แปลเลยครับโอเคได้ Uh, her question is regarding the animal sacrifice, g u m a r a j As we mentioned earlier, that animal sacrifice is not uh, uh, is it is that recommended in the Vedas or not? It's recommended in the Vedas, but not for Kali Yuga. Uh, In the Kali Yuga, there are no qualified brahmanas to recite the mantras. In other ages. They could recite mantras and they would sacrifice the animal and they bring it back to life in a new body. But in Kali Yuga, no brahmanas are there to do this. So people, it is Vedic sacrifices, not for the Kali Yuga. การเสียสละนะนะครับการเสียละเสียสละการสังหารสัตว์เนี่ยไม่ได้อยู่ในหลักธรรมของกาลยุกต์ Is that her question? โอเคไหมคะพี่คำตอบถูกไหมคะเออตรงไหมคะคำถามที่ถามไปใช่ค่ะใช่ค่ะ Thank you Raj for your uh for your explanation Hare Krishna Hare Krishna You you what is that Ji Mata Ji please Ah yes Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj and dear devotees please accept my humble obeisances all glories to Sri Lopakopal Uh, Guru Maharaj, my question is: 
uh, why are we called eternally conditioned souls when liberation is possible for us? I uh, confuse a little. Mm -hmm. Are you going to translate? You don't pass it. Uh, the question was not very clear. Uh, as we are the uh, soul. Uh, Why are we called eternally conditioned souls? But we can become we can become liberated. So why is it we're called eternally conditioned souls? So we're called eternally conditioned souls because we've been in the material world a very long time. We've been conditioned to material world. But material conditioned souls can become liberated souls. The different one way in which you can become liberated is by sadhana. You do good sadhana and you can become liberated. Another way you can become liberated is by mercy. We say Kripa Siddha. So, although we're eternally conditioned souls, we're called Nitya Bada, Nitya Bada, eternally conditioned souls, we can become liberated. And we're only call, we're called when we call eternal, when we say eternally conditioned, it means for a very long time we've been conditioned. Okay, is it clear? Yes, Guru Maharaj is very clear now. Thank you so much for your explanation. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay, I think no more questions. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Okay, so we'll finish here. So we thank Yogeshwara Prabhu for his translation. Thank all the devotees for participation. Srila Prabhupada Kita. Go back to Brinda Kita.